the art of not caring what other people think or say about you. We grew up in a culture that we are judged by our looks or how we behave in public. So everything was about how we are seen, how we are observed by others. Especially for women, this is more difficult because we had to think about how we are perceived by people. In order to belong somewhere, we had to conform, which means we were hesitant to share our opinions because if we do, we could be kicked out of the society that we belong to, our friends, our school, our family. So we started to think that if we stop disagreeing or if we don't say what we think and we agree, also if we become invisible, then we won't have any problems. But what this does is that it makes us more dependent on what other people think or say about us. It almost comes to a point that we can't define our own self-worth but we leave this to other people, outsiders, and they determine our self-worth, which you ask me is completely unacceptable. When I was a kid, for example, even my teenager years, I was a people pleaser. I would do homework for my friends. You know, they ask for something. I would always say yes. I would never say no. I would paint their pictures for the art class. I just wanted to be loved. I just couldn't say no because if I said no, I thought that, you know, they would not like me anymore and I wouldn't be accepted in my community anymore. Now I don't think that way, of course. But this was a self-defense because if everybody likes me, then nobody can criticize me. And if your self-esteem goes down, what happens is that you stop improving. Because in order to improve, we need to take risks. We need to get visible. We need to be able to say no. We need to be able to tell our own opinions. And once we stop doing that, then there is no more improvement. I had some clients before who were afraid to post on Instagram because they were so afraid that people will judge them or not like what their art looks like or they will ridicule them, something like that. But if you don't post on social media, how are you going to promote your art and your art business? So we talked about self-worth, right? If we improve our self-worth, if we improve our you know, feeling of unworthiness and if we improve our self-compassion then what happens we improve our self-esteem and if our self-esteem goes up then we start not caring about what other people think or say so what is self-worth is feeling worthiness like i am worth something i am worthy like these are the words that we usually don't tell ourselves but we should if you're thinking that your art is not beautiful or it's not worth what it's worth, <laughs> if you are having trouble you know, pricing your art, when you were a kid, maybe your parents dismissed you when you really needed their attention. Or maybe when they were making major decisions about home or about life, they didn't ask your opinion or maybe they didn't even let you know what was happening. This made you feel left out. When a child is left out of this such a major issue, then they start to think that, you know, my thoughts are not worthy. Maybe you painted something, you drew something as a child and you wanted to show this to your parents and your parents say like, yeah, whatever. Or maybe they say like, oh, why are you drawing? Just go and study math instead if you got some reactions like that then there is definitely going to be a problem in your adulthood about your self-birth feeling not enough is also a big problem that we need to work on for our self-esteem again in your childhood maybe you were raised in a home where maybe your sibling had more attention than you did or whatever you did was never enough for your parents. For example, you got 90 from an exam, but your mother say like, why it's not 100? Let's say your father said such and such got into the best school, why you couldn't? These kind of reactions from our parents are coded in our little child brain as I am not enough. 
and I will never be enough no matter what I do. The last thing that kind of lowers our self-esteem is lack of self-compassion. Self-compassion means the love that you feel for yourself. Do you love yourself? If you don't, then that's a problem. If there's a voice inside your head and it keeps criticizing you, then please know that it's not telling the truth. And that voice can be silenced. You just need to be more mindful about it. So self-compassion, feeling not enough, unworthiness, these problems can affect our life in a major, major way. Think about your life as a wall and every month of your life, you're putting a brick down. Traumas in our lives, it can be small or big, doesn't matter. Every child has a trauma. It can be a divorce, it can be a death, it can be a fight, domestic violence, anything that you can think of. These traumas create holes in that wall, in our soul, okay? So those bricks are missing. Those missing bricks are the self-worth issues, not feeling enough, and lack of self-compassion. So what happens when someone criticizes you? Think of them as they are throwing a hook at you. And that hook can get hinged in one of those holes and take you down very easily. But if you close that holes and have no problems whatsoever with your self-compassion, self-worth, and feeling enough, then that hook will never have a hole to hold on to. It's just going to bounce back. That's what we want. We want those criticisms to bounce back. And once we close up those holes, once we are a complete brick wall, then what happens is that we can take risks, we can be visible, we can be honestly unbeatable, unstoppable. Another thing I want to talk to you about is shame and guilt. If you have an undescribed feeling of guilt or shame deep inside you, this might be causing you some self-esteem problems as well. According to the psychologists, kids with their kid brain codes traumas in a very different way. If the trauma is caused by a natural disaster, it is not coded as guilt or shame. But if the trauma is caused by another person somehow, it can be a parent, it can be a stranger, doesn't matter. Then the kid codes this trauma as guilt or shame or both. Because in their mind, the other people are perfect. They are grown-ups and they are doing everything perfectly. They are making sure that she is secure. You know, everything, you know, everyone around them are perfect. Then, in the presence of a trauma, they think that they might be the problem. They think, I am the problem. I must be the problem. How does this show itself in our adulthood? Let me give you an example. For example, about a year ago, I had a client and I said, hey, why don't you go to a coffee shop and tell them that you want to hang your art piece there and if it sells, then you can give a certain commission to this restaurant or cafe, whatever. And she said, no, I can't do that. And so I said, like, why? Because, you know, I just, I feel ashamed. And, and I said, why? It's not a shameful thing to ask. Again, if you cannot explain the reason of this feeling, then there might be a trauma there because she couldn't give me a solid reason why this could be a shameful act. And finally, I want to talk to you about the person who criticizes you. If you ask for criticism and the person is giving you their opinion wholeheartedly, then that's great. They might be really wanting the best for you. This is good because we need criticism to improve, definitely. But sometimes people criticize you without even you asking. And <laughs> what they are trying to do is basically reflecting their own pain onto you. Let me explain. In deep down, they feel so incompetent about something that by reflecting this onto you, they feel relief. Because then it makes two of you who has the same problem, he's not alone. And by telling you that you are lacking this whatever thing that they are criticizing of, then they will look higher in their own eyes, but actually they are not there, they're even lower. 
So they're trying to balance it out by just reflecting that on you. For example, I want to talk to you about a memory of mine. I visited my old school after two or three years break and when I went down there in Turkey, my neighbor was there because it was a boarding school and we were living in our own apartments. My neighbor saw me after three years and the first thing she said was like, oh, you gained weight. <laughs> It was just so funny to hear this from her. At that time, of course, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> now it is funny because I didn't have this mindset, but now I do. And you know, basically what this means is that she cares about what other people think about her weight. And she doesn't like herself. She doesn't like how she looks. And then and there, she reflected that on me. She wanted to see a reaction like, oh, yeah, did I? Or, I oh, know, I'm, I'm so fat. So that she can feel better about herself. For example, the other day my client said, um, you know, my uncle came to our house and he said something like, oh, you made these paintings? Like, how much money are you making? You know, is it enough to pay your bills? He's worried about paying his own bills. He's worried about money all the time. And I think he deeply feels incompetent about meeting his family's needs or what he wants to do in life. Do you see the pattern here? Maybe this helps you a little bit in understanding other people's criticism. And the best thing you can do in these scenarios is to stay away from that person <laughs> or the situation and just not hear them, don't listen to them, and don't let them get under your skin. Get criticism from people who are in life at a place where you want to be. Don't listen to everybody. Don't get criticism from everybody, including your parents, guys, because they cannot see things objectively about you. If you want to get there, then you want to know how they got there, and their ideas will be the best guide for you. And finally, I just want to show you one thing and then close up today's video. When you got a criticism that you didn't like or it really, really made you worried, you started to panic or it just your heart is beating really fast, what you want to do in this case is to leave the area. If you're in a physical area, leave that area. If you just read a comment on social media, just close that app and do this. Take your hands, Put it on your chest like this and take a deep breath and give it out. Again, do this, but just taking your chin like this, your jaw in your hand, just give yourself a mini hug. Trust me, this helps because you're not just calming yourself down, but also telling yourself that, hey, I love you. You'll be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. I hope this video helped you guys. It was kind of different than my other videos, but hopefully you'll like it. If you like it, don't forget to hit the like button and you know the drill, please subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you in my next video, bye bye.